So here's another example where we can use Ragdoll uh, just to speed up our animation. So if we had a shot where Lectra and Jimmy are playing pool, um, we want to focus more on the character animation of this. We don't want to spend all of our time doing animating every one of these balls moving around. And if uh, what we could do is just have Ragdoll uh, be able to have that work. So you get all the RBD in there and you can start focusing in, again, instead of all these balls and how they move, we can get a nice uh, natural uh, motion from them while we then can focus on our animation of our characters. And so um, just to take a look at something real quickly, I'm gonna turn off Electra and her pool cue. And uh, just to take a look at uh, an example of being able to um, use our control shift global uh, transform mode with a locator on here. So in here I have um, in Jimmy, I just have, I'm going to just isolate these and you can see we just have three controls on there. Um, the control from the cue, uh, Jimmy's backhand. And then I have a locator here that I've uh, put on. When I created it, I just created it with, with this selected so it's parented so you can see as I move it, that that moves as well with it. But now what I could do is by using this, I can have this as a different pivot. So now I can just be able to easily just kind of move wherever I want that Q uh, tip to be um, on there for pivoting around and, and how we want to uh, move it uh, and position it onto that ball, so how it'll be hit from there. So this also allows us to be able to, if we just grab the back end, I can now, by whatever my last selected object is, I can pivot it all around uh, the center of where that Q control is, or I can just select the backhand and use the backhand to move it all. So I can just start lining it up and, and being able to get it uh, for the hit there. So it's a flexible way of being able to use our global uh, shift uh, of how we can start moving things together. And by using a locator, we can add that extra pivot there so that we can uh, start being able to move all of our controls together without needing a constraint. So now the other thing what we can do here is if we wanted to, and we want to take a look at the ragdoll. So if we go into ragdoll, I'm just going to mute these ones for a second, and we're just going to keep the reposition one on. Now, if I go into ragdoll, what we can see is um, we have, oh, I, unfortunately I set a key on that, uh, but we have, this is the movement that is going on. And what I'm going to do is just switch on to here so I can turn off uh, the balls to sync and I'm going to turn off the cue ball as well. So now we could just see our ragdoll results going on here. So if I wanted to move everything, we weren't doing the break and we, we wanted them to shoot over here. What I have set up um, is again, I just have a selection set called reposition and I'm doing it on my reposition layer here. So I'm going to go where I have my key. And now what I can do is I can just rotate everything, reposition everything together and now we can end up with a different uh, way it's going to shoot. And uh, <clears throat> so now we have a completely different uh, um, animation. You can position them all around there, still getting the ragdoll in there, and then we can just bake that out as needed. So it's a handy little way to be able to globally move all your characters all around, uh, reposition them, and still have the ragdoll uh, continuing on. But again, uh, the great thing about this would be you don't have to worry about these. You don't have to worry about animating them if they're if the shot is just they re, they just getting the results. Now you can focus all on your character animation, and you know that these will always look good when you want to do your uh, flipbook and put it out for review.